Welcome back to 2019 PDJ Pro Worlds. We've got final round chase card action. I'm Ian Anderson, joined by Seppo Bayou. How you doing, Seppo? I'm doing very good, actually, currently. Feeling amazing. Yeah, have a good round out here at Lake Erie today. I did. Today? I finished good my World Championship, so I'm really excited for the rest of the season. Nice, man. Awesome. Hope we can keep that going in the next one. Uh, but we have our final round, and we have our chase card. Uh, Chris Dickerson, Kevin Jones, Simon Lazat, and Eric Oakley should be a very fun watch. It's always a fun watch when you got Simon on the card. Yes, always. All these guys, we have an amazing card today. All these guys are a treat. Now they are. A couple of your prodigy homies, too. Yes, absolutely. Kevin yeah. and Chris. Yeah. Uh, we're starting off on hole one. What's the play? The play is not throw in the water. If you do throw OB, you want to throw OB on the right side on the walk path. But obviously, you want to stay on the grass and uh, hopefully have some sort of flex so you stay safely in bounds and have a short upshot for your three. It's a tricky upshot with that, that hill on the. It really is. And if you throw in the water, you're going to the drop zone, which is a bogey automatically. Yeah. Chris Dickerson on the box. Do you know his bag? I really don't, actually. I was hanging out with Chris uh, right after the tournament, but I, uh -huh. I didn't really get to check out his bag, but I'll probably recognize most of them. Cool. Uh, Chris Dickerson rips. That was 72 miles an hour out of the gate and a great drive. Yes. I mean, he he throws D1s for, for the most Distance, part. Distance, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we saw some M3s, some F5s from him the other day out at, yeah. out at uh, Northwood. So, absolutely great player. Uh, Kevin Jones looks like he's got his D1. This is the famous D1 he's been throwing for a long while. He's had it for a minute, hasn't he? Yeah, and he, it still hasn't changed. And he really tries to cut that corner. He's not trying to mess with the water at all. He's really trying to get on safe side as soon as possible and just trying to fade it uh, on the grass. But unfortunately, that did turn it so much OB. That one OB? Yeah, OB really? long to the right, through the tree, which is just crazy. Yeah. If anything, that ends up OB in the water, right? That's interesting. Simon Lazat, 76 miles an hour. This is amazing. Yeah, and this is, uh, Simon is just feasting on this hole. This is made for him. He can just cross it hard and uh, yeah. He He's has a really easy look for a three. Just outside circle two. Yeah. Ridiculous. Eric Oakley. Not the biggest arm on tour, but definitely has a good amount of power. No slouch. He was throwing like 69, yeah. 70. Yeah, definitely. He throws good far, uh, good distance. I think this is going to work as well. That's great. That's probably about 190 feet to the yeah. basket. Yeah. So Kevin's going to be up first after, unfortunately, drifting OB right. It's going to be a uh, decently long upshot here. It's yeah. 256. Interesting line. Interesting line, yeah. Kevin likes to go straight at it. He's throwing a putter, PA2, uh, just trying to go straight to the basket and uh, lands it to about 25 feet. Chris Dickerson. That'll play. That'll play for sure. Should be a pretty easy birdie start for him. He's another great putter thrower on, on the Prodigy team. Yes, he really throws putter amazingly. Eric Oakley's up. Leaving it a little shorter than you want on that putt. And Simon Lazat, so close, he is jump putting. But I think he just decided to play it under the basket. Yeah, it's a, a jump putt up, really, up, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Eric Oakley, scary putt here at OB. Catches a little bit of chains. Kept him safe. It was pretty windy, especially on this hole. And it, all, the, all of this earlier holes, I felt like it, it pretty was, or it was windy. Yeah, I totally agree. It was by far the windiest day out here. And the muggiest, too. Oh, my goodness. True. Yeah, it, it uh, rained for a second right before the round, and Kevin with a really nice putt. Yep, saving his par there. And there is Eric dropping in his par. Dickerson looking for a birdie. So methodical, but it pays off almost yes. every time. Yeah, he really goes through the same routine every time, even for the shorter pots, just to make sure he doesn't miss them. Yeah, I was asking Kevin about the nickname. It's the, the robot chicken. I, yeah. get, I get the robot part. What's the chicken part? I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but Chris likes chicken a lot. Does he? We really, we just talked about this the other day. He really only eats chicken. That's, yeah? Yeah. All right, that must be it, man. All right. We're, we're calling it. That's what it is. Uh, hole two is getting getting tougher, Zeppo. Way tougher. Uh, I think 
we're gonna see maybe a roller, we might see a back kind of mid-range, and we are for sure gonna see a sidearm. Yeah, look, everything plays. Everything plays, just anything that stays either straight or finishes to the right, because you don't want to be fading in the downhill towards the water, because that's really the main problem here. And also, we'll be on the right. It's all about your appetite for a risk-reward, Yes. what type of shot you choose here. So, uh, Chris is going straight mid, uh, throws it a little high, which is the most common mistake probably is, yeah. and uh, gets a little, little bit unfortunate roll too yeah right away from the basket Simon going for an MD3 placement shot just 56 miles an hour show he's, he's not trying yeah, to do too much he is probably not even trying to go for a three or maybe he is but it kind of seemed like he was behind the gazebo there he is yeah he's, he's slightly out of position a little, little bit shorter than he'd like uh, Kevin threw a fantastic forehand on this hole last time around and this, uh, as long as it skips to the right now. Oh, it like ah, grabbed it and skipped so it close. left. He uh, got pretty far though. I think he should be having a look to save his par again. Yeah, definitely possible. Eric Oakley, this looks inside. Needs to kick. Oh, oh, that was close though. It was, I thought it might get back in there. Uh, but it's unfortunately out of bounds. But uh, we haven't seen really too many rollers here I know. so far. But I threw a roller every round, and I threw it pretty good. The same bounce? I was, yeah. I was worried about them curling too hard. Yeah, you got to keep it kind of hanging towards the water for a little bit before you r curl it around. A little longer than it's comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scary yeah, I guess bit. you got to be comfortable with the roller game. Uh, Dickerson, I could not really get all the way to the pin from where he was. I think he was almost like 480 he out. He was far away. Yeah. Th Simon, 364 from the basket, so oh, still. Yeah. So he kind of has a straight, or he has a straight look for sure. I thought he was more behind the little uh, casebo there. And super unfortunate that kicked all the way to the right-hand side of the fairway left yeah. OB. Eric throwing three. Sidearm plays pretty good because the hill side is a little bit more friendly for that yep. angle. Coming up a little bit outside circle two. Uh, should make for an easy five, though. Kevin throwing three after the OB drive. That's a good shot. It's just a little bit past the basket, but he's looking to save his par again. Any par save after an OB drive on this hole is... Yes, that's great. Because th this is one of the more difficult holes on the course, actually. I believe so. Uh, Dickerson throwing three. Just trying to get in position to save his par. I think he's done that. Really trying to keep it low so it doesn't hit the cedar tree. Uh, Simon, after the OB second shot, that's his fourth. He'll drop in a five. And Eric looks to be just laying up for his five. This hole is a bear, Seppo. It really is. And uh, as I said earlier, on these earlier holes, it really was windy. Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't hit the same way on the other side of the park. He kind of go down the hill or something like that. Yeah, yeah but it was it was gusting over here very hard. And Kevin unfortunately does miss yeah. the comebacker. He's gonna have to settle for a five, and he's definitely disappointed in that. Looking to attack from the chase mm -hmm. card. It's not gonna help. Dickerson looks to be saving the par, taking his time once again, going through the routine. Does two pump fakes, and then he goes with it. And you know, some people will spin the disc, you know, a couple times, and then other times they'll spin it a ton, you know. Yeah. Hit his, same thing every time. Yeah. Gotta admire that. Very deliberate in his game, too. I feel like he's always testing the wind. You know, mm -hmm. everything's got a purpose in it. Absolutely. Eric Oakley cleaning up the Bogue, as will Simon. Man, a four and yeah. three fives there? It didn't play so good for these guys. How'd your card do? I think we did pretty good each round. I think we probably, my card probably played it under par. Nice. That's well done. That's a tough hole to, hold to attack there. Uh, Dickerson with a four stroke lead on the chase card. Uh, looking to hole three options here. Options, I think we're once again going to see a few different options. We're going to see sidearm for sure playing over the car, uh, walk path. And we're going to see a straight mid range shot. Possibly even the hyzer, which Matt Bell showed us the first round. Yeah, that worked beautifully. We know Kevin likes that forehand over the road. For sure. I think that's a very good play. Dickerson going up the middle. Is that an M3 or PA3? I think it's a PA3. It flipped up more, though. It might be a PA4. I think it, it was a PA4. And he goes all the way long OB again. Yeah. 
that's that's surprising. Paul did that the other day. Yeah, exactly. That looks like an MD3 for Simon. Pulls it just a little bit. If it sits down, it should be just fine. It's not a bad miss over there. No, that's... Yeah, but if that had kicked one of the trees, it would have probably kicked Obi on yep. the left side. You see that happen so often. So often. Kevin, this is the D1 you said, right? Yes. A little shorter than the other day, but works out just the same. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's the pot that you're going to usually be putting when you throw the sidearm because it skips a little bit more to the right. I think it was two or three feet from that spot <laughs> the previous round. What are we seeing here? It's easy. Okay, he's going straight. Yeah. He kind of looked like he was lined up to the left. He did, didn't he? I yeah. Mean, he, he yeah, his roundup is a little different than it is, yeah. most. But I'm kind of surprised because Eric has such a good sidearm. I would think he, you know? was, he would go to the left gap. I think he might be on us up in there. That might be saving him strokes next year if he watches this. Because I would say he's forehand dominant, if anything. Yes, he is one of the better sidearm players on tour, I would say. Yeah, he's got an easy 450. Simon for birdie after Eric came up short. Nice putt from Simon. Yeah. He is underrated and an awesome putter. Yeah. I don't even know if he's underrated. I think everybody <laughs> knows he's amazing. Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think you guys know. I don't know if yeah. the, the crowd talks about Simon as a great putter. Crowd, you all need to talk about him <laughs> as a great putter. <laughs> that they do. <laughs> this guy, also a great putter. Yes. And everybody's talking about that step putt he's all the time. He's a robot. Yes, just a robot putter. They just go in. It does the math and makes the putt. So is this guy. These are all amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> Deep knee bends for the win right there for Kevin Jones. Very different putting styles here, actually. Kevin yeah. and Simon have probably the most contrast in their putting styles. They really do, do they? Yeah, could not agree more. Uh, some nice birdies, though, from Simon and Kevin. With the the very diametrically opposed putts. Chris Dickerson, three strokes in the lead on our chase card and on the hole four. Such a fun hole to watch some discs fly. Yes, and very difficult. Um, you gotta throw something straight through this gap or a slight hyzer from the right side of the middle tree. Uh, just anything that finishes straight. So pretty much something that has a little bit under stability in it because it goes so much downhill that if you throw something that's even any overstable, it's gonna fade out to the left that it will. Simon on the box with an MD3. Going straight. I think Simon is actually underrated uh, Woods player. He's better in the Woods than people give him credit for. He hit some beautiful lines. Oh, oh no. My. Wow. This is not a lucky hole for him because in Ledgestone this year he had some really, really? unlucky rolls. He took a six on this hole. Uh, having some really unlucky rolls, actually. That's his second un unlucky kick of the round so far. He parked it. Yeah, he did. He absolutely parked it and got punished for it. Kevin? This looks... If, if it flips up, yeah, that's going to be 15 feet to the left of the pole. No, that was even better than I thought. That thing really f had some late flip yes, on it. Yes, that's his uh, really beat-up PA2. Is it? Beautiful line from him. I think was practically flipping the entire time. Chris Dickerson this is a little more stable. That's kind of what you talked about, Seppo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very common spot, but it's not bad. Uh, you can either pot from there or just take an easy three. Absolutely. Eric taking a different line than the rest of the gang here. It almost seems like he might be throwing a felon. I think it is a felon, dude. It is a felon, yeah, actually. Yeah, uh -huh. But he probably just decided that that's the disc he hits the gap with the best. Mm -hmm. And he's probably just fine with, with being on the left side. And less likely to go OB, right? Yeah. Might be something to that. And he had a run. He did. Uh, unfortunately, hits the, the band there, but looks like that'll be a par save. And like I said, Chris being very methodical, coming out, coming uh, out into the yes, opening to check the win, man. Very smart. Makes the cut drop it because he checked the win. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got a purpose in his game. So solid. And Simon, I mean, fortunately, he got to take it pretty close mm -hmm. to the yeah, basket. That's a good three. But he threw a two. Just didn't end up with one. Yeah. 
Evan with the birdie and the stroke. I guess it's not a stroke on the card after Chris hit that great putt. But a uh, fantastic drive and capitalizes. Eric, looking for a par save? No worries with that one. Pretty well played by the, the gang there. I would say so. Yeah. Two under, that's probably mo better than most cards. Yeah. I mean, for sure, yeah. better than most cards. And Simon almost got that too as well. Uh, we will kick it off to our sponsors and check you out in a second. Love getting outside and challenging yourself to become better? How about spending time with family and friends or just marveling at the pure joy of flight? Then you've come to the right place at the right time. Join the PDGA. Yep, good little bit of turn and then a nice strong fade. I've been meaning to talk to you about your pre-shot routine. In the tournament, you only get 30 seconds. Wait, really? Yeah, really. Oh. All right, back to the action. And we are on the infamous, or is it famous, baseball hole, Seppo. Yeah, it's a famous baseball hole. Uh, you can, once again, pick your poison. You can uh, throw safe here on the right side or go for the basket. I think we're gonna see both. I mean, Simon and Kevin are for sure going for the basket. I actually gotta tell this. Uh, I hit the basket today with my drive. You did? Yeah, I did. Oh, what part? Uh, the top of the basket. Oh my gosh. D1, K Jones way up in the air, 74 miles an hour. And that's just crazy that he can go that high and that spiky oh. off the tee. Oh my. Inbound. <laughs> that was close. He goes that far, man. He goes deep off the basket that high. with a spike kaiser. That's like legit spike kaiser. It was. I I don't understand the power that takes. Chris Dickerson, he's also got a D1. And Chris throws far also. He like does. This is a pretty spiky shot. 74 miles an hour. Yeah. And that's just a control shot. Like, he's not even trying to throw too hard. Uh-huh. Must be nice. He's got a putt for the birdie. Simon Lazat. No slouch in the distance compartment. 70 miles an hour. A little slower than the other guys. He didn't clear the fence. No, I think it kind of slipped out from him. It it seemed like he really just did tossed a little bit early. Yeah, he's throwing a hyzer faster than 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Pretty good indicator of that. Uh, Eric with a more conservative play. I uh, just laying up to circle two. And he'll pitch up and take his par. Yeah. Because going from the drop zone is not fun, Seppo. No. It is so far away. It's a very easy six, which I did the round before. Yeah. I guess it's play, what, 380 to the pin from here? It's yeah, about 380. Usually into the head went too. Mm -hmm. And Simon almost going OB again, but catches the bottom of the fence, and that'll give him a putt to save his bogey. Eric, very long look for the birdie. Pretty good round, kind of giving it a, it a soft round. Yeah, give it a half chance to go in. Kevin, not an easy putt. A strong left to right wind. Hey, look at those banners. Putt. Oh, just left. I thought it missed right, if anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe overcompensating for the win, possibly? Probably, actually. Simon with a perfect putt to save his bogey. Was That's a good bogey. Yeah, after the OB drive, definitely. Dickerson for a two and a stroke on the card. Oh. Left to right wind, probably. Got him. him off just a little oh, bit. Oh, you're right. I get really surprised when he misses a putt. Yeah, especially not a very long putt. Yeah. Eric, dropping in. Played that hole like he planned. Just easy three. Yeah, yeah. It always feels good when you play by your game plan. If your game plan is to take par and you do that just the way you want it to, it feels good. Yep, exactly. Uh, Simon losing a stroke to the chase card crew there with that bogey. Uh, Dickerson three clear. Of uh, Kevin, and we're looking at hole six, man. This is the the hole where it really starts to test your game out here. Truly, uh, yeah. These two holes, holes hole five and six, are both kind of similar. Uh, you either play for a safer par or you go for a birdie. And uh, here you just want to kind of lay up with a hyzer, uh, and then choose. You either go for it or not. You do. And even that layup is not easy. No especially with the wind we have today. Uh, right to left, headwind, uh, 
it, it's not going to get your disc as far as you want to. Kevin Jones with a D1. That's good. I don't know as, as good as he did the other day, though. No, that's exactly what I thought would happen easily because of the uh, right to left wind. Mm -hmm. It will take your discs uh, further, th further to the left. Dickerson? Probably going D1 as well. D1. Looks like the same batch as uh, Kevin grabbed yes. his from. <laughs> Must be a good run. Really overstable run. That it is, isn't it? That's what you guys like. It's always funny to talk about pros talking about the, the good runs of discs. Yeah, they're it's, always the overstable ones. It's the ones. overstable ones. <laughs> Which might not be good for the AM arms, funny enough. Eric Oakley. Probably throwing an enforcer. Yep, I believe so. And he's trying to cut the corner a little bit there. A little bit. I think that's a really good play because it's not that difficult to keep it wider than those guys did earlier. But, I mean, you wouldn't think so, but it always is. <laughs> like, I did that same thing every time. But it's the, there's a lot of room, honestly. It's not like they're having to hit a yeah. small area. You never see anybody go OB on this off, off the tee. No. Or really rarely. Yeah, you got to shank it pretty hard. Yeah. It's usually left if they miss OB. It's the second shot that's difficult. That is it. And uh, Chris Dickerson, he's got a mid-range or a putter in his hands. He's just going to lay up. And I like this layup line, too. Interesting. He, yeah, he just decided that he's going to keep uh, the disc flying on the inbounds. Yeah. Or, yeah, inbounds the whole time. And just throw it right into the ground. He's got an uh, easy up and down for his four. Not crossing any OB at any point. Mm-hmm. Eric laying up with a forehand right in the middle of the fairway. That'll work, work beautifully. It's still There's still work left to do, though, that layup <laughs> yes. shot. Yes, there is. And Kevin, 485 from the pin, Seppo, and he's running this thing. Yes, this is uh, looking pretty high and might end up OB left. And it does. But that is, that's, oh, he's actually even putting for par. He is. I did the same thing today myself. It's really hard to keep it right enough in this wind. I don't mind that play with, with the guys that have the power to get there because you yeah. can just, you'll have a putt. This is going to be probably just a little bit further than Kevin's. Yeah, or yeah, pretty much, pretty the same. much the same. Yeah, but I think I think he is like three feet closer. So they're gonna putt to save their par. Yeah, you know it's not bad. And bogey on this hole isn't so bad. No, honestly, it, it really isn't. I've seen plenty of eights before. Uh, Dickerson, just doing the robot chicken Beautiful. thing. Easy four from him. Mm -hmm. Again, playing it how you planned it. Eric looking for a park job of his own. And also easy par. Awesome. Even, even better. Eric's playing great. Kevin, this will be to save his par. Just died right before the basket. Simon from just a little bit closer. Nice. Nice putt. I think he made it because he was one foot closer than Kevin. <laughs> Not wrong. Kevin could use that foot. I think I think he would have gone in. No, but it's really difficult to run that putt because the OB is so close behind the basket, and it wasn't like a putt that you're always going to hit the basket with. True. Uh, there's Chris, Eric, dropping in some pars. Kevin with the bogey there. Uh, we'll be losing a stroke to the card. There he is, Chris. Four clear of the chase card lead. He's been playing really well. Got a two down round working. And we'll be looking at hole seven and really a chance to get a stroke back out here at Ledgestone. Or not Ledgestone, but <laughs> Lake Eureka. Right. Uh, yeah, this is definitely one of the easier holes, if not the easiest hole on the course. It's either a putter straight or a mid-range. Mid-range really plays good because of the uh, how the trees are set up. Uh, it kind of fits the gap a little bit better, but if you're back and dominant, that's probably what you're going for. Those late trees ruin so many good drives. Yes, they do. Yeah, they, they leave you to that 30 feet mm -hmm. pretty often. Yep. <laughs> this Dick is actually uh, Dickerson's uh, Tour Series PA3. Oh, nice. And putting it right where he wanted to, I think. I like that pure ante line. Mm -hmm. Gives you that like, 15, 20 footer from the right-hand yeah. side every time as opposed to... I see people doing that very often. Yeah, you don't have to gamble with those middle trees. Eric loves a forehand. And this is looking great. What a skipper. Nice shot. That was a cool one. Nice shot, Eric. That'll be a, another a drop-in birdie for him. And 
Simon. I believe this is an FD3. Yes, that's his FD3. He's been throwing it for a while. Just a little bit wide. I think it might be just a little bit difficult to go for that shot with a driver because it's pretty short. True. And Kevin is throwing the PA3 sh uh, hyzer flip shot that he's been doing every round. Just this time he hits the last tree, but he should be fine. He is unfortunately squared up right behind those trees, though. Yeah. You'll see. He's going to have to pick a side, and neither looked great. Simon, forehand up shot. Totally making up for the drive there. Nice to see that. Should be an easy par from him. And Kevin chose to straddle out left. Yeah. Well, just a little low left and skipped off the rim there. He's had really tough putts for the last three holes, yeah. even though they've been makeable, but they've been all difficult. Yeah, a little awkward. Yeah. Now uh, there's Chris doing what Chris does, making a putt for two. Uh, Simon's going to come along and save a par here. We'll have a par save from Kevin as well, and a drop in birdie from Mr. Oakley. Nicely done by him. A couple birds there with Chris and Eric. Kevin and Simon, some disappointing pars. Uh, we will kick it off to our sponsors, and I'll see you guys in a second. Guys, we are back to the action, and it's not getting any easier here on hole eight. Yes, hole eight. Um, there's we had a really good win for the hyzer shot. So there is a hyzer that you can take over the trees on the right side, but I think we're still going to see most of these guys go for the straight uh, shot here that uh, Chris is going to show us. You throw the, throw the hyzer, or you go. I middle? didn't. I didn't. But if there was a day to do it, this would be the one. Gotcha. It looks like Chris is D1, but he has unfortunately turned that one over into the brush, and that is going to be an OB drive. And you go to the drop zone. You do. Which, which is uh, on this side of the creek. It is tough. Yeah. Eric, just going to fire a forehand through the gap. Not exceptionally far, but not, not bad at all. Yeah, that's his problem. Just trying to play two sidearms on this hole for birdie, or mm -hmm. maybe even lay up from there. Yeah, four is a great score on this one. Simon? Flirting with that left hand brush, uh, but punches through. Mm -hmm. That's a good shot. And he can definitely get there from, get to the basket from there if he'd want to. We'll see if he chooses to try or not. Kevin Jones. This is Kevin's favorite shot. He might be the best at it, actually, He's, in the he, world. He, he throws a beautiful hyzer flip to flat with just a little bit of turn. Yeah. Yeah. Coasting for quite a long while. Uh, Dickerson from the drop zone. Just trying to get to the stump that's uh, there about 90 feet away from the basket. Ripping that 174 miles an hour, full power. And should be a pretty easy up and down for him from there. Eric, let's see how much he bites off with his second shot. I think he's playing the stump. It looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just so far away still that... I see that pretty off, pretty often, actually, from a lot of players. Yeah, it's far, and you got to finish straight if you want to get there. Simon playing the Heiser flip with the this MD3 again. with the OB. Needs to get down and settle, which it does. Nice. It's a long putt, but it's a putt. And Kevin, after by far the best drive, uh, left with just a putter approach, I believe. Or is that his MD3? No, that's his PA2. Or M3, that, sorry. Uh, PA2. PA2? Yeah. Left a little short. A little more height on that. It had the power to get yeah. there. Dickerson. That's going to be his fourth. He'll be putting for five. Coming after Mo, Busting out the Jukes. Eric, his third. Just laying up for an easy four. And Simon's got a chance for the bird. Tickles the chance a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Kevin, this will be for a stroke on the card. What in the world, dude? 
He usually doesn't airball him. No. I, I think he this is not just not the best putting day for him, yeah. wh- which happens. I mean, he can't always be amazing. Yep. Uh, Chris is going to try and save his five with a comeback putt. Ooh, Ooh. nicely <laughs> done. That one thought about falling out. Kevin has a little comebacker. He I does. Mean, probably about 23 feet. little tester putt, and especially more Definitely. of a test when you yeah. just missed one. Just a little bit to the right side. He also had a little bit of funny stance there with the hillside. Kind of mess up his straddle. And it rained right before the round, so it's muddy too. Yeah, it was it was muddy and really sticky out there. It's probably the coolest day, but I think I sweated the most. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, Simon drops in, saving his par, as will Eric. And uh, Kevin and Chris with some bogeys there. Yeah, what a tough hole. That that gap on the drive looks so much smaller in person than it does in video. Really? I, I saw it. I was like, oh, man, that's kind of intimidating. It's pretty <laughs> far away, too. I mean, it's probably 300 feet away or even more. Yeah. yeah that, one, that one took me by, by surprise. Uh, we're on to the bridge hole, Seppo. Yeah. Here, this is an island hole. you got to make it into the island, or if you don't, you're going to the drop zone, which is at the other end of the bridge. And uh, these guys are probably going to throw putters, mid-ranges, or fairways, whichever they feel the most comfortable with throwing 350 feet. You called it. Oakley on the box. Throwing felon. Going probably more to the left side, just like this, because there is a little bit more room on the left side. So he throws an overstable disc before, because of that. And that's a common play, actually. I was worried about that one out of his hand, though. That definitely looked like a little bit of an early release. Simon? It's going to work. Oh, that'll play. Also mid drains. Uh, yeah, he's inside the circle. Looks like it's MD3. Chris Dickerson. Do you recognize this one? Uh, I got to see the flight. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't know for sure, but I think it's... Look at over a bit or fairway. Maybe, maybe F1. Yeah. I definitely had some dump on it. Kevin, gotta be an A2, right? Yeah, this is an A2, and now he got the angle right. This is what he's been trying. Yeah, he got it flat. Yeah. And that's gonna work for a birdie, I'm almost certain. That'll cure his putting woes of getting it he's nice and nice get and that. close like that. He's yeah. gonna get that. Uh, Dickerson? Oh, almost. But just swirls around the basket. Yep. Just caught the back of it there. Eric looking for a birdie. And left just low there. Missed opportunity for him. Simon though. Ooh, nice. Little left side, but the basket catches it. Good catch. And Kevin after that beautiful A2 throw will be uh, dropping in a birdie. Par drop-ins from uh, Eric and Chris. And that's fine. It is. Making an island kind of feels good. It does, does yeah. itself. It, it can ruin a tournament. Yes, <laughs> we've it can. Seen, we've seen it happen. Uh, there are the twos from Kevin and Seppo. Trying to chase down Chris just a little bit. Kevin and Seppo. Kevin and Seppo. Kevin and Simon. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I like that. <laughs> that is all we got for part one, guys. We'll catch you in part two.